God bless each and every one of you. We welcome you to the program tonight, this evening. This is the Word of Power Gospel Hour. I thank the Lord for having us on here. I thank the TV station for having us on here. It's an honor and a privilege. And I pray to always preach the Word of God, the true Word of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray there's many people that's being blessed, saved, delivered, healed, filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray God is meeting your needs. I pray my job as a minister is to get you saved, to get you living for God, to get you plugged up with God, get you hooked up and booked up into the Word of God. Because if you don't, you're just wasting your time as a Christian if you're not in the Word of God. The Bible says in Timothy's study, show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. See, it's your job to study the Word of God. To know the Word of God. If you don't know the Word of God, you don't know God. Come on. Right. You, you don't know the will of God if you don't know the Word of God. Amen. God and His Word are one. Jesus said, my Word is spirit and my Word is life. Amen. Hallelujah. I have a message today. And it's to the churches in the city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know there's some of you out there. I, I know your thoughts. Jesus, two times in scriptures, he says he knew their thoughts. I know your thoughts right now. Who's he think he is standing there talking to me? Hallelujah. Well, I'm the one God's representative that he put here yes. to speak. Hallelujah. If he put you here to speak, I pray you'd be faithful to preach the same thing too. Yes. Preach whatever he gives you. Because you're accountable. Hallelujah. You're Amen. accountable to God. If I don't preach what God gives me, I'm accountable to God. Blood be on my hands. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be faithful to preach what he tells me to preach. Or he take me off here. Yes. Amen. He silenced me. Hallelujah. Glory. You should be the same way. Hallelujah. Faithful to God. and Preach his word, nothing but his word. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Hallelujah. Or in Revelations, he said, yeah, I add unto plague unto you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach what God says to preach. If you get mad, I'm sorry. There's something wrong in your flesh. You need to get your spirit right and your heart right. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm nobody. I'm just a servant of the Lord. I'm a servant of the Most High God, and I pray to speak as an oracle for Him, to always speak His true, unadulterated word. Can I hear an amen? Amen. In power. Hallelujah. Some of you need to be set free. Some of you need to be set free of that pride in you. Come on, Henry. who is he talking to me? Who does he think he is? I think I don't. It's not who I think I am. It's who I am in his kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know I love you. That's why I'm here. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I have a message today. This message is a hard one. That's not easy, but I'm going to preach it. Hallelujah. Because God told me to. The name of this message today is Get in the Right Fight. Yes. Get in the right fight. Some of you are in a wrong fight. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Some of you all are wrestling against flesh and blood. You're in a fight with flesh and blood. We're, that's, we're not called to that kind of a fight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You cannot walk in the flesh and fight in the flesh. You're going to lose. Hallelujah. And you're going to displease God. Hallelujah. Too many churches are warring against churches in the flesh and not the spirit. You're in the wrong fight. Paul said to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. We got an opponent called Satan. And we need to get in the right fight. Our sisters and brothers in the body of Christ are not our enemy. Amen. We're to love. That's a commandment to love each other. Can I hear an amen? Churches are not called to fight with churches. We're all supposed to be one body of Christ on the same team. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you are on the other side. When you start warring with other churches, you just cross the border. You just cross the line. You're on the devil's camp. You're in the devil's camp. You're, on, you're the church of the Satan. Come on. I'm telling the truth today. I'm speaking nothing but the truth. Holy Ghost truth today. Hallelujah. When you start fighting other churches and you start fighting people, you're acting just like the devil. Come on. All of a sudden, you become the church of Satan instead of the church of God. Come on. 
Hallelujah. I want to preach this and it will go forth in power in the name of yes. Jesus. Some of you will repent. And some of you will get back on track and some of you will, will stand in your pride. The Bible says those who think they stand take heed lest you fall. Some of you are about to fall because you won't repent. Hallelujah. Some of you are just nasty in the, in the flesh and spirit. Come on, you need to repent and get washed clean today. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we argue and fight with people in the church and churches. People argue with one another in the churches. And sometimes churches argue and fight with churches. Right. Paul rebuked the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go here. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Please write these down today. This is very important. Hallelujah. We need to grow up and mature in the churches and be about our Father's business, not about the devil's Amen. business. Come on. Hallelujah. We fought with each other for too long. God's getting, I'm going to tell you something. God's getting fed up with it. I'm here to tell you today. God's getting tired of it. That's why I'm here preaching it. Paul went into the churches to reprimand some of the churches and to get them back on track and get them straight. God put us here to, to get some of you churches straight today. Hallelujah. And if you, if you stand back and you don't repent, some of you, you your candlestick's going to be removed, just like in uh, Revelation chapter 2 to the church of Ephesus. Yes. He said if they didn't repent, he'd take their candlestick. The candlestick is your church. Hallelujah. God's tired of, we're in the wrong war. We're in the wrong fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. <clears throat> Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as the babes in the Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither were you are able now. <clears throat> for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Is there a lot of envy and strife and, and arguing going on in your churches? Yes. Churches? Among and between churches, people in the church arguing and fighting, envying and all these kinds of works going on. For while one saith I am a Paul and another I am a Paulus, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is a Paulus but ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted a Paulus water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gave the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. <clears throat> For we are laborers together with God. <clears throat> you are God's husbandry, you are God's building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> now, I want to go on. I got the main scriptures in here now. Paul told them they were carnal, not spiritual. He told them they were still babies. Babies have to be bottle fed and pampered, and they cry a lot. Same here. Verse 2, Paul, Paul told them there was too much envy, jealousy, and division and strife. They were divided. Come on, they were divided, mm -hmm. following different people and ministers and ministries instead of Christ. In verse 4, he said, For one saith, I am Paul, and another, I am Apollos. In verse 5, Paul told them, <clears throat> Paul told them, Who then is Paul or Apollos, but ministers of the Lord, by whom ye believe? Verse 6, Paul said, I have planted Paulus water, but God gave the increase. Verse 7, so then he that planteth in anything, or he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. So now, verse 8, now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Okay, I read you these scriptures, but I'm reading them again. Write them down. For we are all laborers with God. You see, there was people in that church that was divided over ministers in there. They were looking at men, following men, instead of God. Are you doing this today? Amen. Yeah. Even the apostles, when they went up to the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, Peter, I think, and John, 
And when they went up there, they saw Elijah and they saw Moses in the light. It was a great light and Jesus transcended and he was like light and he was talking with Moses. Uh, not Moses, but he was talking with Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Moses. And the first thing Peter said to Jesus, he said, let's build a temple for Moses. Let's build one for Elijah. Let's build one for you. And a voice came out of heaven and said, listen to my son. And Peter hit the deck. He's repenting. He's shaking. He's scared. You see, he wanted to build a temple for men. Sometimes we want to build temples for men instead of God. Come on. Let's God build the building. It will not stand. Amen. Let's the Lord build the building. It will not stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They want to lift up men. Put men on a pedestal. God's the one sitting on the pedestal, honey, up in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were following men instead of God. They were respecter of persons. There was strife, fighting, embassy, jealousy, arguing over who was to follow who. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If you're going to follow someone, you better make sure they're following Christ and are, and are like Christ. There was always something going on in the churches. Paul addressed them in his letters to them, his epistles. He always told them, Shall I come with a spirit of meekness and love or a rod of power to rebuke? He had to help straighten the churches out and the people and get them back on track. It was going on then and has gone on down through the centuries. It's still going on. If you read the epistles, Paul spoke to, the, to each church. In Revelation 2 and 3, there was a lot going on in the churches, and the Lord rebuked five out of seven of mm -hmm. them. Hallelujah. When we are saved, born again, we become the body of Christ. All churches are the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 4, 6. Paul told them they were puffed up one against another. In verse 7, Paul said, who makes thee different? from one to another. Paul was telling them they were all the same in the church. Some thought they was better or more than others. It's like that today. The Bible says knowledge puffeth up, but the spirit edifies. Amen. Too many times in the church we have cliques like Corinth. This one follows Paul, that one follows Apollos, and there's divided cliques instead of one body of believers with one goal and one vision, the Lord's vision and goal. This has been going on since the church started in the wilderness, and I'm going to give you an example. In the wilderness, Korah and his followers rebelled against Moses mm -hmm. and wanted people to follow them. Yes. They wanted to take over leadership. That's a dangerous thing. It cost Korah and his followers their lives. God never picked Korah. He picked Moses. God didn't even pick Aaron. Moses did. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we cause division and strife in the church and against God's elect and chosen and cause trouble and try to overthrow God's authority, we could end up like Korah. There's too many people that's carnal in the church today that follows other people besides their leader God put there. Listen to me today. Some of you going to get in trouble. Because you've caused so much division and strife in your churches. You've got people to join in with you. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to wind up like Cor and his followers if you don't repent. And listen to those that God has put over you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. God put them there. Listen to me. Hijacking leadership and mutiny in a church is very dangerous. Too many times people don't have the same goal or vision of, of the one God put there. Catch, listen to this, catch division, don't cause division. Yes. Catch division, division. don't cause division. Hallelujah. Amen. Too many selfish people in the church wanting to do their own thing instead of the church's thing. Come on. You can't go your own way and do your own thing in the church. If you have a God-given ideal, submit it to the authority. They just might like it and use it and do it. Come on. You never know. 
If it's God, they will know, and if it's His timing. Too many people want to do their own thing and get people to join in with them, and then the church pulls apart. Come on. Amen. You got a, a divided church there. People doing their own things. Instead of the vision that God put in the leader. Amen. Fulfilling it. And then maybe cause a church split. Not together as one anymore. There's so many churches. Listen to me. I know. Been around here for a while. There's so many churches in this city. Some of them. There's four churches on one block. On each yes. corner. Amen. Amen. A lot of churches got open and started because someone got mad at the pastor or their church and got a lot of people to join in with them and cause a church split and took the people out. I've seen this happen time after time. That's no good, people. No. That's a sheep thief. Mm -hmm. That is a sheep thief. Stealing sheep to fill up your own church. That's wrong, and what you sow, you will reap. The same thing will happen to you. God's not pleased with these kind of things and actions going on. I hope you're listening to me today. Yes. It's taken a lot to have to preach this. God really had to anoint me to speak this. But I hope you're repenting today, and I pray you stop causing trouble in the churches yes. and the body of Christ, or God's going to deal with you. Look what happened to Miriam when she run her mouth and Aaron against Moses. He put them out of church. He was going to put them both out of, out, of, out of the tabernacle. He gave her leprosy. She had to go into wilderness for two weeks. It put the church on hold. It put the tabernacle on hold in the wilderness. He said, oh, if only your daddy was spit in your face. In other words, you need correction, and I'm going to correct you. Amen. Some of you need to be corrected. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. She was a prophetess. Aaron was a, uh, the high priest. He, he was going, Aaron repented. Miriam didn't. So he put her out of the tent. She was full of pride. Some of y'all full of pride and you won't repent. I'm going to tell you what. You're going to get put out of the camp. Even if you're the pastor, God will come replace you. Come on. You need to be there with one common goal to fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Churches should work together, come together. We're one army. We're supposed to be on the same team. The world has sit back. The devil has caused so much envy, strife, and division, and arguing and fighting in the church that, that, that we have done that. He starts it, and he leaves, and he sits back and laughs at us. Then the sinners see that going on in the churches. They say, we don't want none of that. We got plenty of that out here. I want to get free from it. I get in the church, and I have the same thing. He sat back and made a mockery out of church. Come on. We need to get in the right battle and in the right fight and quit fighting one another. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't, God's going to put you off the team. Come on. Yes. It ain't time to play no more. It's time to get this gospel out. Amen. It's time to get the harvest in. Can't you see the condition of the world? It's getting worse and worse. God wants us to get them saved so he can come back and get the devil out of here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <sighs> Hallelujah. We need to get in the right fight. God didn't call us to fight with one another no. or with other churches. When the world sees the church and the shape it's in, no wonder they don't want to come to church. They probably have enough of that in their home, fighting, arguing, division, and strife. That's all of the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. I wrote these scriptures down too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In James 3, 14 through 16, it says, if you have envy and strife in your heart, verse 15, this wisdom isn't from above, but earthly, sensual, and devilish. Verse 16, for where envy and strife is, is confusion. For, for where is, is confusion. Hallelujah. Amen. For where these, for where envy and strife is, is confusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then after that, he said, and every evil work. He said, where, there's, where this is at, where there's envy and strife yes. and confusion, there's every evil work. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. That's why I mean you shape you. You read it, but some of you don't do it. 
See, there's a difference in reading it and do it. You gotta yes. apply the word of God to your life. You gotta do what it says. You gotta obey it. Can I hear an amen? Jesus said, "If you love me, obey me." Hallelujah. We're to set the examples. Yes. What kind of example are we setting? Hallelujah to the world. Come mm -hmm. on. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I know it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, churches. There's a lot of confusion and strife in the churches. Yes. And what did he say? Where that's at, there's every evil work. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. The churches need to get rid of it. The churches need to get rid of this. And the churches need to get it together and come together with a common goal and purpose. <clears throat> What's the purpose of the church? Fulfilling the Great Commission. Yes. And win the lost. We run off the loss. We're, we're supposed to win, to win the loss. We run them off. Come on. Yes. Most of the churches, being immature babies and always fighting, it's time to get mature and grow. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And to grow up spiritually and come together and work together. We're all supposed to be on the same side. God's side. God's team. Yes. We're supposed to love people and Christians. It's a commandment. Not hate and fight others, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. We don't fight flesh and blood. The church fights the devil, or supposed to. Mm -hmm. We need to get in the right fight, not with people or churches. We have, we have to know our opponent, who he really is, and fight him. Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told Peter, those who live by the sword will perish by it. You see, we can't act or fight in the natural that way anymore. He said we'd perish. Yes. In, the man, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. We're in a spiritual war and battle. Ephesians 4, 2 through 3. It says to keep in unity and peace in the church. Yes. Amen. Ephesians 4, 2 through 5. It says to keep in unity and peace in the church. Psalms 133, 1 through 3. It says how good it is for the brethren to dwell together. In unity. Yes. Amen. Amen. We've been in the wrong fight. We've no been way. fighting for the devil. Come on. Mm -hmm. We need to fight for God. We need yes. to become soldiers of God, not soldiers of Satan. We need to be soldiers of light, not soldiers of darkness. Yes. Come on. We've yes. done too many dark works in darkness. Come on. And call it God. Come on and run people off. It's time we get it together and fight the right fight. Yes. Fight the enemy. Can I hear him, man? Amen. God the Father is going to kick you off the team if you don't work together and keep causing trouble. That was the word of the Lord. That is thus saith the Lord yes. to this city. Yes. That is thus saith the Lord to this city. If you're in ministry, you in the leadership, and you causing trouble with other churches and fighting them, it's time to lay down your sword in the natural and take up your sword in the spirit and get in the right fight yes. in the spirit. God hear an amen, or God going to take your lampstand, yes. or God is going to remove you. And that is thus saith the Lord. God's tired of this. He's tired of it. We, we're supposed to be out fulfilling the Great Commission, getting people, winning them, getting them in the church, not running them out. If you've done these things, you need to repent today and get in the right fight. Yes. Amen? Read the Bible. Know your opponent. Hallelujah. Know how to fight the right fight. Paul said, I, Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Paul said to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Not the bad fight. Yes. We're in the good fight. Yes. If you don't know Jesus, they say Jesus. I repent for you people out there because of churches. I repent today because we're supposed to love people. And if you haven't been loved and loved on, I repent for yes. the church's condition today. And I ask you to come and invite Jesus into your life yes. and heart today. Yes. And I ask the Lord to direct you to a right church where they love people. Can I hear an amen? amen. Or doing his work. Can I hear an amen? amen. Not all churches are alike. There's many good churches, but the ones that aren't, you better repent and get on track. Yes. Amen? If you don't know Jesus, they say, Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be the Lord, Savior of my life. I believe you died for my sins and was resurrected on the third day. If I confess you with my mouth and believe in my heart unto righteousness, I'll be saved. If you said that prayer, Jesus, come to my heart. Be the Lord, Savior of my life. Save me today. 
get in church and serve him. Let him lead you to a church where they love people. Yes. Where they truly are doing the works of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We're here. I want to see a harvest come into this city. Churches, if we don't work together, we're never going to see the harvest come no. in. We're killing the harvest. Amen. Yes, amen. We're chopping the harvest down instead of bringing it in. Oh, yes. We're not harvesting it. We're destroying it. Hallelujah. Glory yes. to God. Don't do the devil's work no more. Do God's work. Yes. Love the people. Win them. Fulfill the Great Commission churches. Work together. If you don't believe what other people believe, just still go after the harvest. Don't get in their way. Hallelujah. Now God may take you out of the way. Amen? Yes. Repent today and fulfill the Great Commission. Let's get the city saved. Let's get the harvest in. Amen. Amen. We love you and we'll see you next program. Hallelujah.